What's up everybody? Thanks for checking out the video. Let's make a video game real quick. So you've got your desk perfectly set up. You've installed Unreal Engine 4. You've created a third person template project and given it a great name. And then you realize, I don't know what the f I'm doing. Then this project is for you. This is five essential beginner tips for creating a video game in Unreal Engine 4 for people that have mostly never programmed before. All right. So everyone's been a beginner before, and I've got to tell you, Unreal really isn't that hard to learn. It just takes a little bit of explanation for everything. That's what I'm here for. The first thing you need to focus on besides basic navigation is understanding Unreal Engine blueprints. Blueprints are the foundation of the engine and are universal for nearly every game built in the engine, unless it fully utilizes C++ or something crazy like that. But what the heck is a blueprint? Well, here's kind of an explanation of a blueprint. I'll take a simple static mesh straight out of some 3D software and place it in the level. And it's there, and it can even have physics applied to it. But by default, it doesn't have any health, it can't interact with anything, can't have any commands or input given to it, it just kind of exists. But with a blueprint, you can give it all that functionality. Let's dive into that. All right, before I forget, don't forget to color code your folders. You can right click on them, go ahead and set color to whatever you want. For blueprints, I normally set it to a nice blue. That way it's easy to find, and trust me, it just speeds things up a lot, and it's the best. All right, so tip number two, let's get into some blueprints. Well, luckily the third person template includes a basic character blueprint, uh, it includes a game mode, and even a mini tutorial. We can throw this one in the trash, since you've got me to help you out. Garbage. All right, let's double click on this bad boy to open them up and see what's inside. The first thing you'll probably notice is the giant event graph taking up most of the screen. This is where all the coding goes to tell the engine what the actor can do. We can even see some basic functionality right here. Uh, we're gonna ignore kind of literally all of this for now though. Tip number three. Let's set up some variables to give the student some attributes, like a name, and you know what? Let's literally bring them to life with some health. We do this by adding variables to our blueprint. Variables are your best friend. They let you give blueprints different types of information, and you can do something with that stored information later on. Let's ignore all this, everything that's going on with the blueprint editor right now, and let's just go down to the variable section here on the bottom left. Let's add two by clicking the variable button twice. Now we can customize what types of variables we want these to be by changing it in the upper right hand corner right here. Another thing that might seem overwhelming at first is just the sheer amount of types of variables that are offered to you. There are a lot. But like I said, variables are super helpful and we're just going to focus on making a name and health for now. For creating a name, we can use a couple things like a literal name, a string, or even a basic text. Well, that's the one we're going to use, just a basic text, pretty simple. Another mini tip, there's a million ways to do things in the engine, so don't be afraid to try something new. It may not work as efficiently as other things, but it, it might still work. All right, we'll compile our text and let's go ahead and rename it to something useful like name. Once we compile it, we'll see that we can go ahead and set the name to whatever we want. After we have our text created and compiled, let's create a float variable. So we can change this one to a float here. This is going to be our character's health, and a float is just a number. It's pretty useful though because we can use it like a percentage to represent our health. Like 0.5 would be 50% health, or 1.0 would be 100% health. Hopefully not too hard to follow. Tip number four. Okay, so we created some variables for our character, but when you play the game, none of them show up on screen, and that's because we haven't told the engine exactly what we want to do with these variables. The information's there, but it's just not doing anything with it yet. You have to tell it exactly what you want to be done with it. Do you want the name to be shown on the ground? Do you want it upside down? Do you want it kind of round? Right now, we're just going to simply have the variable show up on screen as a string. The easiest way to do this is with a function called print string. There's a lot of common functions included in the engine, and you can even make your own functions, which is super handy whenever you need something specific to happen. But let's just right click here, search for print string, and select it. 
you'll see by default it just wants to print the word hello on screen and that's not what we want to make it print what we want all we have to do is hook up our variable get that variable and go ahead and plug that right into the string and instead of it saying hello it's going to be saying our name which is right here tip number five this is our last and final tip Okay, so our print string is ready to print our name on screen at any time. It's ready to go, but there's actually nothing telling the print string when to fire. Is it when you start the game? Is it when you jump? You have to specify when you want this to fire. So to tell the engine when we want the print string to happen, we have to set up something called an event. An event is usually something like a player pressing a button on a controller or on a keyboard. And we're just going to press the E key to fire the print string. So let's right click on the event graph and choose keyboard key E right here. Now all we have to do is plug this bad boy into this bad boy. And now when we play, we can hit the E key to print our name on the top left of the screen. Definitely looks pretty boring though. So in the next video, we'll make it a little more interesting. We'll use something called Unreal Motion Graphics to make it look a lot better and bring our character to life a little bit more. He's still a little bit not alive. So that's gonna bring this video to a close. Hopefully you learned something. Thank you so much for watching. This is my first ever Unreal Engine 4 tutorial video. There's tons of free ways to help content like this continue in the future like liking the video, subscribing to the channel, commenting down below, maybe on what you want future tutorials to cover, really any sort of engagement helps. But seriously, I'm here to help you think like a game developer, so stick around for more videos like this.